This week on 4 Drive TV, we've got highlights from Rumble on the Rocks. The 40 finally gets a blast, and we get the dirt on rusted out diesel fuel pumps. I'm Simon Christie. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. G'day there, Alan Johnson here from Prone Off Road Products. If you're thinking about crossing the Simpson Desert, I would say that's a fantastic thing to be doing. It's a great trip, one of the best trips you'll probably do in your life. There is preparation that you need to do, and I guess this is a quite a complex question because a lot really depends on what vehicle you have to start off with. But I guess to start at the very, very beginning, to cross the Simpson Desert, one of the very first things you need to think about is fuel. You do have to carry significantly more fuel than you would normally be carrying in a standard vehicle. To that end, that probably means either putting a long range tank in or carrying some jerry cans. Now, how much fuel are you gonna need? And that's a really tough question to answer because it does depend on your vehicle. If it's a petrol vehicle, the answer is a lot. And if you talk to Mr. Simon Christie about how much fuel he used in his Nissan Patrol 4.8, it was hundreds of litres. I took a diesel 80 series across and used about 130 litres, as opposed to the 200 plus odd litres that Simon used. So the answer to the question, it really does depend upon your car. But apart from fuel, there's a lot of other things to consider. And another second thing that's very important is obviously your suspension. Your standard vehicle suspension is not really designed to carry the weight of all that fuel and all those other things that you need to carry to have a happy, successful and safe and reliable trip. So therefore, upgrading your suspension is very important. Now, when we say upgrading your suspension, what that means is putting in better quality, slightly heavier springs, either by leaves or coils, whatever you've got, and some decent quality shock absorbers are going to be capable of controlling the extra weight that's going to be carried in your car. Now the next thing obviously is tyres. A lot of people say, well can't I run the standard tyres? The answer is yes you can, but good quality aftermarket tyres are going to have you less problems with sidewalls, less problems with damage to the tyre. The standard tyres that most vehicles come with are relatively light in the sidewall design, quite suitable for high speed and running around town and light duty four driving. But again, when that vehicle is loaded, the tyres are going to cop a caning. You're going to float the pressures down to get up the big dunes, so think about some better tyres. Now, they're probably the absolute essentials. You do need to think about things like water, because water is an important component. The Simpson Desert is a Category A desert, which means it's a damn dangerous desert if you go the wrong time of the year. We'll come back to that in just a moment. But you do need to carry water, enough water for each person. Allow that if you did get stuck somewhere, you've got enough water to survive on. You can survive without food, but not without water. The next thing, of course, is navigation. Now, there are many, many, many ways of crossing the Simpson, and obviously the most common way is probably your French line or your QAA or any of the rig roads, the major well-known tracks. If you stick to these tracks, there's not a lot of real navigation required. But if you do go off those tracks, then it becomes really, really tricky. You can go like 200 metres off the side of one of these tracks, and you're in the middle of absolute nothingness. So if you do wander off the track for whatever purpose, if you want to go looking around for relics or things of old mining, or perhaps where they've been digging for oil or stuff or whatever the case may be, it is very, very easy to become discombobulated or lost once you can't see that major track. So some means of navigation, a GPS or whatever, is very, very worthwhile. Now, some people ask me about emergency beacons, and my attitude to that is, if you can afford to carry one, it's not a bad thing. An EPIRB is a personal emergency beacon. You can set the thing off anywhere you are, and you'll get found. Obviously, you don't do this lightly, because it costs a fortune to get people to rescue people, but an EPIRB can be a very, very good thing to carry as well, if you're going to be out exploring. Apart from navigation, I guess the other things that you've got to think about is, what are you going to do when you're out there? How long do you want to drive for? Depending on what you want to do, whether you've got kids or family or just travelling by yourself with your mates, there are things to take into consideration. It does get very, very hot in the afternoons. The evenings quite often get down to zero or even sub-zero, so it's very, very cold at night. In certain parts of the desert, there is absolutely no fires anymore. This is a new regulation. I don't actually like it a lot, but it's something we have to respect. Be prepared. Warm clothes at night, very important. probably sounds a bit mean and selfish is don't go during the school holidays. It's the busiest time of the year. If you really want to enjoy the Simpson Desert, try to avoid school holidays because every man and his dog's just about going out there. 
Best time of the year, I reckon, would be July, August, even into September is a very nice time. The summer months, November, December, the temperatures are extreme, and I mean really, really extreme. It is not a good place to go, and in many cases, I even close the desert down to stop people from going across, because it is actually life-threateningly hot. So time of year depends on when you can get away. If you do have to go during school holidays and take your kids, I guess do it. There's other people out there, you'll run into them and it's not such a bad thing in some ways. But whatever you do, do go and do it, Andrew. It's a great, great, great trip. Do be prepared, get your car sorted out right. Now, common sense things in terms of spares to carry. I've seen people break their cars literally in half and carrying too many things. An overloaded car is a really, really, really bad thing to have. A sensibly loaded car is important. Carry the absolute minimum of spares that you need to keep that car going. What that means is you don't worry about things like headlights or indicators or mirrors or things like that, just the things that you absolutely need. Fuel filter, air filter, possibly a set of wheel bearings, CV joints, uni joints should all have been changed or checked before you go away. Obviously a complete service and if the car is an older vehicle, get it to a mechanic who does four wheel drive preparation, get them to check it really, really thoroughly to make sure there's nothing that's going to let you down. I normally take an old set of belts and an old set of hoses that I've just changed to make sure there's no issues there, make sure my radiator's in spot on condition and if anything else goes wrong and it's minor, I just live with it. But the most important thing is get out there, do the trip, have some fun, make it safe and make it enjoyable and go and do it again. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave from Responsive Engineering and I want to show you some damage caused by water contamination in your common rail supply pump. In this one here we can see in the suction control valve or pressure control system of the pump the rust and debris is gathered on the wasted area of the spool. Also we've got rust evident on the cam block assembly remembering that this common rail system is tolerant of three micron particles We've got particles there that are more than 10 times that sort of measurement. So this system is in big trouble. We see scoring in the trochoid pump, around the lobes of the trochoid pump. This is caused by the rust entering the system. And rust on the internals of this joiner pipe. So all in all, this pump has uh, quite a few problems, all due to water. As you can see, it's imperative that we keep water out of our fuel system, and the only way to do that is with a water watch protection system. For more information, follow the links on the 4-Wheel Drive TV website. Hi, I'm Sinead Carell, co-owner of City View 4-Wheel Drive Park with my husband Steve. We're out here this weekend for our annual competition, which we've titled Rumble on the Rocks. We've got some of the toughest terrain out here, huge rocks, big drop-offs, and a bit of a challenge for everyone. Some of our competitors have even said to us that this is by far the toughest four-wheel drive event that Queensland has to offer. The biggest challenge that the competitors will face is just being able to get their cars to the finish line in one piece. There are many, many obstacles and the wet conditions that we are having this weekend is not making anything any easier. This is our second rumble on the rocks. Unfortunately, both times that we've held this event, the weather has not been kind. We've had a lot of rain and that has changed the tracks dramatically. Some of our competitors have been through these tracks in the dry, but with the amount of rain we've had, they're finding these tracks are not the same as they were last time they drove them. With changing conditions like this, it means the guys are seeing something new and have to think a little bit more on their feet and the navvies have to do a lot more work. It's definitely not as wet as the last time we held Rumble on the Rocks. That has allowed us to run our night stage, which unfortunately we couldn't do last time due to safety reasons. Best thing about owning City View is that we get to put on great events with great people and have a blast. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all-new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. 
you'll get three-ton towing and the awesome 470 newton meter Duramax diesel engine, plus an impressive waiting depth and hill descent control, all for the hardcore adventurer. The all-new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today. 30-second kitchen, a kitchen in 30 seconds. Fridge slide first. Fridge slide's got 130 kilo tracks in it, so it's nice and tough. Remove the R-clip, don't lose it. Drop the pin, leg locker. Kitchen now. Lock kitchen down here. Retrieve the R-clip. Lock on here, R-clip in. Leg here, leg here. Pull them together. Stove, Billy. How good's that, guys? Couldn't ask for quicker. I'm Chris Weston, off-road racer and owner of Off-Road Rush. And I wouldn't race on anything else than my Mickey Thompson tyres. I trust my Mickey Thompson's at high speed. They can handle wet or dry without any trouble. And that means I can keep racing while the competitors stop to change tyres. Mickey Thompson? No wonder they call them legendary. Call 1300 Mickey for your nearest dealer. Hello, my name's Steve Carell. My wife, Shade and I are the owners of City View 4 Drive Park, and we're here for our annual Rumble on the Rocks competition. This is an event for the big boys. Among our vehicles, we have some purpose-built buggies. We've got competitors that have been doing the Tough Truck Challenge, and we've got some new vehicles that have been quite freshly built. A couple of our competitors did the first Rumble on the Rocks. The majority here this weekend are new competitors new vehicles that haven't been here before. Some people have driven the terrain we've got, some of the others are in for a bit of a shock. It will be very interesting to see how the new competitors go as opposed to the competitors that have been here for the first one. The first couple of stages are some sort of rock garden type gullies that we've got some bunting in to keep it nice and tight, force them to do stuff the vehicle shouldn't normally do. As the weekend goes on, the stages get progressively harder with bigger rocks, bigger climbs and bigger drop-offs. Saturday morning, first we start with a qualifying stage. This isn't counted in the overall time for the event, but may be used as a tie break if that happens to be the case. The first stage that we do then is a stopwatch type stage with one vehicle on the track at a time. It's bunted up very tightly to make the competitors drive over the hardest parts and the biggest rocks. They run down the course, there's a U-turn at the end of the course and then back to where they started from. Moved on to the next stage which is what's known as Kells Creek which is an uphill run. It has some extremely large rocks, extremely big climbs and in our first one we did lose a couple of competitors in this stage. It was quite disappointing on this stage that on one of the big climbs, Thorpe Racing put on a very spectacular show, but unfortunately did some fairly extensive damage to the vehicle, which put them out for the weekend. So very disappointing for us and those boys. This track did turn out to be quite tough. We did happen to lose a couple of the other competitors as well. The night stage we finally get to do in the dark, as we had to change it last year. It starts off with a series of rocky ledges that's dropped down. Not too big, not very hard for these sorts of vehicles. Then they come around the corner and they drop into some of the biggest rocks you can find. It also has the biggest drop off of any of our stages. Most of the vehicles will use a strap to hold the back of the vehicle up to keep the wheels on the right side. Hi, I'm Dave from Responsive Engineering.
You've heard us talk about Water Watch over the last 12 months. We quite often get asked the question as to why we should put Water Watch on if my vehicle has a factory fitted water alarm in the filter canister. This factory filter works quite well at what it's designed for, but this detection system in the factory filter is not designed for water at high flow rates. It's meant for detecting water which is small amounts come off the paper element. You'll find that even in the flow type system, quite often the flow rate under load actually holds the float and restricts the float from moving. Others where there's a float assembly which runs on a pole, this area can be contaminated with small particles of algae and debris and restrict the operation of the float. The reality of it is this is not designed for the same purpose. The purpose the factory filter is designed for it does very well and that's particle control. Water Watch is unique in the fact that it's a standalone water trap and separates water from your diesel and detects even the small amount of 5 to 7 mils at a flow rate of 50 to 60 litres an hour. Water Watch will also respond much quicker than most other systems including the factory fitted units. If you want any more information about how our Water Watch can save you many thousands of dollars in repairs, follow the links on 4 Wheel Drive TV website. Yes, unfortunately, as we started Sunday morning, we only saw four competitors in fit state to continue. Quite amazing the way they tackled the last stage. What was expected to take several hours, the first truck completed in 30 minutes, and the longest truck was just over an hour. There was several drop-offs, some quite challenging technical drop-offs, lots of big rocks, waterfalls, and just about two kilometres of consistently difficult obstacles, large rocks and tight manoeuvres. The All Metal Magic Car had to do a couple of quite difficult recoveries on this stage. In the nature of true sportsmanship, Two Evil came to his rescue and helped him out of a very difficult situation, which was quite soon reciprocated as Two Evil lost a wheel and needed to borrow some tools off the All Metal Magic truck to get himself back on the race. Over the course of the five different tracks we had set, we had very different terrain, lots of technical obstacles that these teams had to maneuver through. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometre warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. With nearly 100 years experience in designing and manufacturing heavy duty filtration, Donaldson is one of the most trusted brands in the market and our filters meet or exceed OEM specification. Originally developed for four wheel drives on mine sites, Donaldson's range of four wheel drive filters will perform in even the toughest environment, giving you peace of mind that you are buying the best and the most reliable filter for your vehicle and backed by a full manufacturer's warranty. Donaldson, tough filters for tough environments. 
When you need your manual gearbox rebuilt, don't start in reverse. Get it geared up right the first time with the team from 360 Gearboxes. As Australia's premium gearbox and diff specialist, 360 use the world's best gears, shafts, bearings and seals. 360 offer a guaranteed and quality changeover and A1 customer service. If your manual is grinding, crunching, sticking or blowing, demand the best 360 Gearboxes, a fast, reliable and high quality rebuild. For more info, visit 360gearboxesdiffs.com.au. We recently filmed a short Holden training video in regard to the Colorado's new trailer sway safety feature. This obviously required the use of a trailer and it just so happened that the 40 was being stored on my trailer down at 4x4 Obsession so we picked it all up as a unit. Here's the actual video that explains the Colorado's trailer sway safety feature. As we mentioned earlier, the Colorado Ute has an unbeaten 3.5 tonne towing capacity on all models, with a 2.8 litre engine and a 3 tonne capacity on the Colorado 7 mid-size 4x4. No job will be too difficult and with the improved performance across the range, Colorado will now tow a trailer, caravan or boat to its respective limit with greater ease. The 3.5 tonne tow capacity is a great way to highlight just how strong and tough Colorado is. And to make towing even safer, a system called Trailer Sway Control is now standard across the Model Year 14 range. This system detects the onset of instability in trailer, horse float or caravan towing situations and automatically intervenes to keep the trailer under control by activating the brakes and reducing engine torque. Now in simple terms, I found myself with 5 minutes to spare and the 40 begging for a blast. The temptation was far too much and here's the short version of what transpired. With the 40 now back at 4x4 Obsession, for some final works I will relegate myself to again dreaming about my next chance to enjoy some more four wheel driving.
all the competitors have told us that they thoroughly enjoyed the event, whether they managed to make it to the finish line or not. An event like this would not be possible if it was not for the support of our sponsors and all our officials and helpers that came out and helped set tracks beforehand and all the officials on the day donated their time, didn't get to sit there, a lot of them and watch the action like the spectators because they were too busy making things run smoothly for everybody. For any more information on Rumble of the Rocks or any of the other events that we hold at City View 4 Drive Park, go to our website cityview4drivepark.com I also like to say a special thanks to Simon for covering our event for us and for Liam who is amazing running up and down the tracks like a gazelle keeping up with these competitors to get this great footage. This Rumble on the Rocks has been vastly different to the previous, but still has been a great, challenging, successful weekend. We look forward to the next one. From Steve and Shanae at City View 4 Drive Park, thanks for watching. Next week on 4 Drive TV, we have a special report on aftermarket intercoolers. You can actually get up to 20 to 30% more power by fitting the intercooler itself. We feature the 2013 Melbourne Shot Expo. We thank 4 Drive TV for being here and covering the show. And we celebrate all things 4x4 related. Thanks for watching this week's episode of 4 Drive TV. For further information, check out the 4 Drive TV website and make sure you follow 4 Drive TV on Facebook. I'm Simon Christie. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard, I look forward to your company next week.